God. It's what we hide in our hearts that we might not sin against you. Your word, oh God, is that which keepeth us. Your word yes. is that which purifies us. Your word is that which is true, God. Yes. Your word, oh God, is that which will last forever. And so, God, we ask you, Lord, give us your word tonight. Yes, God. Oh, God, speak life into our spirit and our souls. Yes, God. Help us, Lord, to know what is your truth and what is your wisdom and your understanding. Yes, God. God, let us not lean to what we know, but God, let us lean to your wisdom. Yes, God. And God, we will praise you. We will honor yes, you. We will give you the glory. We will worship yes, God. you. God, in spirit and in truth. Yes, For you are our King, our Lord, yes, God. our Savior, our everything. And God, we will not forget, God, you. We will not forget what you've done. We will not forget your grace, your mercy. We will not forget how everlasting you are. Oh, we will not forget you, oh God. Yes, God. We will remember. Yes, God. We will remember how good you've been. Yes, God. God, we thank you for your daily grace. Yes, God. We thank you for your daily mercy. Yes, God. And we give your name the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Come amen. on and give God a praise yes. tonight. Hallelujah. For he's worthy yes. to be praised. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody excited to be in the house Amen. of the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are thankful to be here once again to worship the Lord and to praise his holy name. Amen. For God is good and beside him there is no other. Hallelujah. Thank you. So good to see you all tonight. Come out and hear what thus says the Lord and we pray that we learn together. Amen. Grow together in his word. Amen. I want to go ahead and go to Revelation chapter 16. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 16. I pray you all had a blessed day today. Amen. I'm still in the land of the living, so it is all right, man. Amen. Amen. All is well with our souls. Let me say a happy birthday to Sister Sheila. Amen. 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 I didn't want to tell her age, but 42 is all right, man. <laughs> we thank God for her and what God is doing in their lives, her and her husband, just such a blessing, a tremendous blessing to the ministry. Amen. And all of you, the Lord's people. Amen? Amen. 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 You should have Revelation chapter 16. And we're going to keep in the same vein where we've been talking about the tribulations and uh, number one, if you're right, we'll go ahead and begin. You know, we begin with talking about the rapture. Then we talked about the tribulation period. We're going to go to the millennium period. Then we're going to go to the great white throne of judgment. Amen? Amen. So recently we talked about the judgments and uh, we talked about uh, the sealed judgments. And then we talked about uh, tonight we'll talk about the uh, vow judgments and uh, last week uh, we talked about anybody remember what we talked about last week see if we give you a bonus if you remember what judgments were we talked about last week the trumpet judgments the trumpet judgments remember we kept talking about the sound amen so the judgments the trumpet judgments uh, and tonight we're going to be talking about the vow of judgment. All right? So Revelation chapter 16, the Bible says, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways, pour out the vows of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vow and upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshiped his image. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man. 
and every living soul in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers, fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. So tonight we're going to be a little expository. We're going to go line upon line. And as we begin, we know judgment is coming to the earth. Our text says that judgment, this judgment was a uh, horrific judgment when staggered even human imagination. When we look at this judgment, it talks about the end of the world. And the Bible calls this the great what? Tribulation, right? So there are three terrifying judgments during the last days. I want you to write this down. There will be the seven seal judgments, what we talked about already. These are the preliminary judgments, judgments that take place before the great tribulation. And then we have the seven trumpet judgments that take place during the days of great tribulation period. And then there will be the bow or the bowl judgments of this passage as stated, the bowl judgment takes place right after the very end of the world at the very end of the great tribulation, right? <laughs> So there's a terrifying difference between horrors of the bold judgments and the other judgments. The seal judgment and the trumpet judgment will be limited judgments, but this last judgment that we're going to talk about tonight is the worst one. The bold judgments are total. They are complete. It is the final devastation and the fall of the ungodly and evil of this world under the judgments of God. The bold judgments will stop and end man's ungodly and evil ways once and for all. So let's look at Revelation chapter 16, verse 1. It says, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways, pour out the vows of the wrath of God upon the earth. So the wrath of God is getting ready to be poured out upon the earth. And this is, you know, a vision that John has been given, right? And the host of heaven. And it says here, he says, go your ways and pour out the vows of wrath. Can you imagine? The vows of wrath getting ready to be poured out upon the earth. And this is God's way here. This is God being just and righteous here. Therefore, we can have confidence that God will right all wrongs. See, it, it's one thing when we look at judgment, it's not judgment to say that God is just good. A lot of people want to say, hey, uh, well, if God, if God was so great, then why would he allow this murder? Why would he allow all this killing? Why would he allow all this? But God is a just God. Amen. Many of us know in our personal life, when we mess up too much, God judges us. He allowed our consequences to catch up with us. Y'all ain't saying amen. amen. Some of us have been through some stuff where we say we thank God for God's grace because he didn't allow that to happen to him. But if we keep on, amen. that whip stick come out, come out and then we got to pay the punishment. Amen. amen. So God is a just God. He's a merciful God. He's a, he's a, he's a favorable God. He loves his children, but he also chastised them that he loved. Uh -huh. Look at verse 2. And the first went and poured out this vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worship his image. Uh -huh. This first bowl judgment is poured out upon the earth. Now you got cancerous sores festering all over the place. You got a malignant and foul and painful things being poured out. People become repulsive and these things become embarrassing. And all of this stuff is being poured out. It says, a vial upon the earth fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast. So their skin began to rot and they begin to smell boils on their skin poured out a point. Can you imagine the whole everybody running around scratching and itching and you know some of y'all remember chicken pox. They ain't a pretty sight. And this is gonna be way worse than that. Everybody's gonna be they're, they're gonna have sores all on their skin. And look at verse three. He says, and the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea and it became as the blood of the dead of dead of man and every living soul died in the sea. Everyone died. Living souls died in the sea. 
points to the Medi Mediterranean Sea and not all the oceans of the world, but it meant specifically to all of the, it says human life, any human life that was in the sea died. Mm -hmm. Look at verse four, it says, and the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of waters and they became blood. Mm -hmm. All of it poured out, now all these rivers became blood. Meaning everyone on earth would die from this if there was no fresh water. Think about that. If everything was polluted, nobody would have anything to drink. Amen. Hallelujah. They would begin dying. This is the judgment that fell upon the sea. Now this affects everything and this paves the way for the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 5. It says, And I heard the angels of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which are and was and shall be, because thou hast judged us. For they have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets and have given them blood to drink. For they are worthy. Mm -hmm. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. Mm -hmm. Again, God is a just God, and because they punished the saints, they punished the people, they persecuted them, God is now releasing his wrath upon the ungodly. Yeah. In the end time, God will be confronted with such a horrifying evil that he can no longer take the ungodly evil of the people. Now, as you know, we already studied that Satan is releasing his wrath upon the earth. So God gets fed up with Satan and says, okay, now it's my turn. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to get back. God will reach at a point when his love for the godly people of the earth and for the righteousness cannot take murderous, the murderous ways and rejection of people anymore. Look at verse 8. And the fourth angel poured out his vow and upon the sun, and the power was given unto him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over the plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. Mm. So even so, God brought all of this, they still didn't repent. The fourth judgment is poured out upon the sun and severe heat and radiation from the sun are going to scorch all the ungodly and the evil of the earth. And they still wouldn't repent. Mm -hmm. I wonder how much does God need to take us through until we repent. Amen. Amen. Repentance, and as we look at the culture of today, is the one act that people are trying to exclude. That they want God to just accept them as they are. Mm -hmm. Accept them. I can come to God. Yes, you can come to God any way you want to, but there should be a transformation. Amen. There should be a change. Amen. And oftentimes what we see now is people have created their own God Amen. so that it fits their lifestyle. I heard a brother out in the streets when we were out there the other day, and he was saying, I got my own relationship with my God. I ain't got to go to no church and nothing like that. And I tell people, I say, you don't have to come to church, but when you get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, it makes you want to go to church. Amen. It makes you want to be around other believers. Amen. I mean, that's anything. You, when people start smoking weed, you know what they try to do? They find somebody else who's smoking weed. You better believe it. I thought y'all would smile at me then. <laughs> when you start drinking, you find, hey, man, who, who drank tonight? Right? So you find people that has a common interest, right? Yeah. So when you get saved, you still should want to find that being a Christian, the only thing people say, you know, you ain't got to go there, you ain't got to go here, you ain't got to go there. But when you're in the world, you ain't have to go to the club, but you went, right? right? You ain't have to go to these places, but you went. Why? Because you had a good time. When you come to church, the Bible says not to forsake the assembly of ourselves. So most people don't want to change. Amen. That's why they don't want the challenge of the church and the preacher. I don't want to hear nothing that convicts my soul. I'd rather stay like I am. So repentance is the one thing that the enemy is trying to use to, to, to keep people in bondage. Because if you never repent, then you can't enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus said, unless you repent, John came preaching, repent. Let's turn to Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Acts chapter 3. In verse 19. And the Bible says here, 
verse 19, it says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. And when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He says, repent. Now, repent means what? To change your mind. Means if I'm driving down 440 and, and that's leading me to hell, I'm going to get off. I'm going the other way. I'm going 540. I'm going somewhere other than the way I was going because this way is leading me to hell. Mm -hmm. Means I get off the highway of my dis destruction. Mm -hmm. The Bible says the highway of the upright is to depart from evil. Amen. And he that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. So we got to learn that there is a thing called changing your mind. Amen. I don't care. A lot of people say, yeah, well, I'm just born this way. I'm just like this. No, you got to, when you come to God, you change everything because you're not leaning to your own will anymore. You're leaning to the will of God. Amen. So when you say you're stepping out of your comfort, you're really saying I'm stepping into the kingdom because yeah. now I'm a kingdom citizen yeah. uh -huh. and the way I act in the world is different than the way I act in the kingdom. Because the culture is different. The culture in the kingdom is holiness, commitment. It is righteousness. And so, so it calls me to be different. Amen. And if some people separate from you just because you've been called to do something different than God, then let them separate. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, lay aside every sin and the weight that so easily besets you. Amen? Amen. So the Bible says, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. So your sins cannot be blotted until you change your mind. There's a lot of people who want God for just right there. I just want to be a homosexual and I want to love God too. I just want to do this and I want to love God too. He says, no, you got to change your mind in order for your sins to be blotted. In order for you to be clean, you got to want to turn. Yes. Amen. You can come as you are, but there should be an acceptance and transformation. Yes. In your life, I was on the porch with two people yesterday and... Uh, I was, uh, the guy was sitting there smoking a cigarette. I said, man, I said, uh, I said, James, how long you been saved? Now, I knew he hadn't been saved, but I, I do it, do it out. I said, how long you been saved? He said, I ain't you saved. <laughs> and I said to him, I said, uh, I said, well, what's the problem? We just talked about, you know, how the world is going crazy and God is coming back. He said, I don't know. I said, well, you can be saved today. Mm -hmm. He said, I can. I said, yes, you can. You can be saved right now. I said, all you got to do is repeat that to me. I said, you ready to get saved? He said, sure, I'm ready to get saved. And James got saved right there on his board, then his wife came up. I said, do you know what your husband just did? I said, you ready? I said, he just got, gave his life to the Lord. She, she said, I know he ain't saved. He said, I'm not smoking no cigarette. <laughs> I said, God does not require you to fix yourself. Amen. Amen. God fixes you. If you can fix yourself, then you wouldn't need God. Amen. So you let God do the processing after this. Yeah. And I said, are you ready to get saved? She said, well, it's always a good time to get saved. Yeah, man. James and his wife got saved on their porch yesterday. Yes, and it wasn't, I wasn't looking at what they were doing. I was looking at what God can do. Yes, All they have to do is be willing to accept him. Amen. Amen. But it starts with repentance. Amen. It starts with changing your mind. Amen. The Bible says, repent ye therefore, be converted, that your sins be blotted out. And when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. He said there's going to be a refreshing. Hallelujah. Amen. And any of y'all remember when you got saved and it felt like it was a refreshing on. down on the inside? Amen. It felt like there was a purification that you just got touched by the anointing. And the, you knew that it was something different that had just happened to you. That comes when you're willing to give God a chain, my Lord. I'm willing to give up this stuff, all of this junk, these people for you. And you feel a refreshing in your soul. Amen. Because your sins have been forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. So this, this repentance is what we shall begin with. Look at chapter 2 and verse 38. It says, then Peter said unto them, they came to Peter asking him, you know, what must I do? Verse 37 says, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts because Peter had preached a powerful message and said unto Peter, to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, what? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You can't even receive the Holy Ghost unless you repent. Amen. 
Amen. Unless you change your mind. That's right. The reason why some of our children are struggling, our grandchildren are struggling, is because they're not willing to repent. Because when you repent, then you got to be filled with the Holy Spirit because that's what's going to help you. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't care how much they've been saved, if they're not filled with the Holy Ghost, then it's not going to help them to be able to fight the wiles of the devil. Amen. So we got to teach our children about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 All right, let's get back to Revelation. What were we? Revelation 16. And uh, I believe we were at around the fifth verse. The Bible says that I heard the angel mm -hmm. of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shall be, because thou hast judged us. For they have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and the power, here we go, was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Mm -hmm. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. Oh. They began chewing on their tongues. Mm -hmm. They were scorched with heat. Now notice, they had balls on their skin. They were scorched with heat. The sea is filled with blood. All of this is going on. Mm -hmm. And now they still would repent. And the Bible says, in his kingdom, was, there was full of darkness. Mm -hmm. And they gnawed their tongues for pain. They began chewing on their tongue. How, how sick is that? Hallelujah. So, so let's look at this. Even so, verse 12, it says, verse 11, it says, And blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. Mm -hmm. That will be a day when people, no matter how much they go through, they will still criticize God. Mm -hmm. They will still call God responsible. Mm -hmm. Instead of repenting and turning, they will do like what we see today, that even though we're in a pandemic, people are not turning to God. The world is getting worse and worse. Amen. Instead of saying, maybe our nation needs to repent and come back to God. No, we're getting worse. We're just like the people in the Bible. We're beginning to gnaw on our own tongue. We're beginning to gnaw on our own bodies. We're, we begin to sit in our own issues and evilness and call it some type of a protest or call it some type of gathering that's for the Lord and it is not we got Christians that are standing behind things that are untrue. Amen. I don't know if y'all seen what I sent out to you this week, but as they were talking about how the Black Lives Matter in the premise of the organization. Mm -hmm. Now, we always agree that our lives matter because we all black and we, you know, we our lives do matter. But the premise behind the organization is witchcraft. Amen. Yeah. It's raising up dead spirits. That's why they are saying, say your name, say her name, say his name. And you remember I preached about it. I wonder if George Floyd would have said the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. I know it was good that he called her mama, but the mama don't have no power. Amen. Daddy don't have no power. Amen. And saying their name doesn't have any power. And when you begin to do stuff like that, that is witchcraft. What they are doing underhanded is calling people names, trying to raise spirits of the day. Uh -huh. It is wickedness. It is, it is the agenda that we must be aware as Christians not to get behind every wind and doctrine. That's what the Bible was talking about. He says in the last days that the, there will be winds and doctrines and there will be things that try to tickle your ears and get you to chase after and lose your Christianity. You got to remember in God you have an anchor and everything that we do we judge it by the word of God. Amen. There, there. We got to be careful, saints of God, because it's so easy now to get drawn away by what the media is saying and lose our, our foundation in the Lord. Remember I told you Sunday, the Bible said, he said what? Not to worry about what to eat, what to drink, what to put on. He says that the Lord will give you that. The Lord will protect you. Did I not protect the animals? And are you not greater than the animals? Amen. 
Matter of fact, I think some of us don't put on a few pounds since the pandemic. And y'all ain't saying that. Hallelujah. So we know that God is a protector. Amen. God is a healer. Amen. We, we don't need to sound like the world. And then people come to me and they say, y'all still having church? Yeah, we have a church. Why not? Ain't nobody dead. Amen. I mean, my son had a, he had a cartoon. I think it was Madagascar. They told the giraffe that he was sick and ready to die. The giraffe went and buried himself in the ground. He wasn't sick at all, but just since they told him that, he went and said, okay, I'm going to bury myself. I'm just going to die in the ground. And then he found out what nothing wrong with him. He got up out of the grave. But that's what the world wants us to do. Hey, you sick, you dead. You need to go ahead and bury yourself. Stay inside, close the door. You know, all of this stuff. No, we serve a great God. The same God that I served before the pandemic is the same God that I serve Amen. now. You hear what I'm saying? Some of us, if we would go back in our history and talk about what the Lord brought us through when we were driving and couldn't see and we got to this place and don't know how we got there. We looked on the other side and didn't know who that was. And y'all ain't saying that to me. But uh, it, it, that, that's some stuff that God that brought us out of that was greater than was pandemic. So if you will trust God, trust God. Because God was watching over you when you were a fool. That's right. Hallelujah. All of us done did some foolish stuff. Amen. Amen. Tell you, you done did some foolish stuff. You done did some foolish stuff. Amen. So we thank God for his deliverance. All right, let's keep on going. Verse 13, the Bible says, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of their mouth, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Unclean spirits. That's what I tell you, you got to be careful in these last days. And you got to have godly discernment to know what's coming out of the mouth that you're listening to. Come on. And I tell believers, don't sit at everybody's table. Amen. Because everybody's table ain't serving the right food. You gonna mess around and get food poisoning. Uh -huh. And can't find your way back to the right food. Amen. So here he says, he says, out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet, is the unclean spirits came out like, can you imagine hopping out the mouth like, like frogs, he said. Uh -huh. Unclean spirits. Verse 14 says, for they are the spirits of the devils mm -hmm. working miracles. And I told you, if y'all listen to it, these organizations and these associations that we see and that we hear, they are, they are, they are bringing up false doctrine and false gods and spirits of the devil. They're trying to raise the dead. Amen. And we out here in the street thinking we doing something. And, by, and on, on the other side, they're raising up the devil. Come on. They pouring blood out and, and all of this stuff and doing witchcraft. And I heard one lady say, who's one of the originators of Black Lives Matter, say that she, she believes that their, their dead spirits are working through her. That's right. Dead spirits working through her. And we out there talking about, you know, no, you Christian believers need to know what you stand on. Amen. And if they're not lining up with scripture, you'll get yourself connected to something that's ungodly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And find out why, why you start to feel all depressed and messed up. You don't connect it with the wrong people. Verse 14, the Bible says, for they are spirits of the devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a what? A thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Hallelujah. This says here that we got to be watchful as believers. We got to keep our garments. Put on Put on the whole armor of God. We got to keep our garments. We, we got to, it says, unless you walk, then every morning when you get up, you got to put on the whole armor of God. Amen. Hallelujah. If you ain't putting on the whole armor of God in prayer, if you ain't putting on the helmet of salvation, understanding that you're saved, if you're not putting on the breastplate of righteousness, Lord, I just want to be right in your eyes. And if your feet ain't sharp with the preparation of the gospel of peace, then you are in trouble because the enemy is looking for every weakness to attack you. Hallelujah. You got you to gotta pre-plan his attack. And you do that by prayer. Amen. You cover yourself in prayer. Mm -hmm. Cover yourself in reading the word. So that when the enemy comes, you're already prepared. Yeah, I'm telling Brother Jimmy, we don't get ready, we stay ready. Amen. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Amen. For it ain't no time to get ready while you're already in battle. Amen. 
You imagine getting in the ring and you ain't training and then say you gotta fight a professional fight. <laughs> it's too late then. It's too late we gonna end up like Mark when he fought Tommy Hearns and his face was full of all <laughs> Cause we, if we're not ready, we gotta get ready. Some of us went out there in the world, I remember my mother had this guy who came to her house and you know, she used to run a group home. And the guy came and he left angry and went back out there in the world and got into a fight and the man bit his whole lip off. <laughs> he came back quickly, he felt murder where I should have murdered out there. And, and, that's, and that's what happened. When you go out there in the world, you remember uh, the other day, <laughs> you remember the other day we was outside, the man was trying to distract us while we were preaching. He had blood on, on the back of his head, a big old knot uh -huh. out there in the world. Mm -hmm. That's what the devil do to you. I said, man, the, being saved is the best thing. Amen. Somebody said, being saved is the best thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The best Amen. thing that ever happened Amen. to me. Yes, God. Verse 16, the Bible says, and he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Mm -hmm. The seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice. Seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven, from the throne saying, it is done. Mm -hmm. Now, this word Armageddon, I know we've heard it, it is the location of the final great battle between good and evil. Mm -hmm. yes. It is the final, the place of the great battle between good and evil. And you will notice this place, it is mentioned in other books like Judges 5 and 19, it is called the Mountain of Mechadu. And there were so many great wars throughout history of time that were great battles fought. Well, the last great battle will be fought in this place called Armageddon and the big war between good and evil. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The apocalypse, if you're writing, comes from a Greek word that means revelation mm -hmm. and unveiling. So we hear these words in the last days all the time. We hear Armageddon, we hear Apocalypse, but we want to know what that means. And the Armageddon is that last great battle that's going to be fought between good and evil. Mm -hmm. Verse 18, the Bible says, And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, and so great, that and the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of wine of the fierceness of wrath. Verse 20, and every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. Now, this is a big earthquake. And this earthquake was so big that it's gonna shake, it's gonna shake the actual structure of the world. Like it's not even gonna look the same. That's how bad it is. Look, look at the verse again. It says, and the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations failed. The great Babylon came into remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of wine of the fierceness of wrath. And even in verse 18, it says that it was so mighty, the earthquake, and it was so great, and the lightnings. So this was a great, a huge earthquake that shook the very foundations of the world of what we see today. Amen. Verse 21, and there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, mm -hmm. every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blaspheme. Mm -hmm. You imagine that hail falling out of heaven. Stone about the weight of a talent, heavy stone, and men blaspheme God because of the plague of the hail. But the plague thereof was exceeding great. Can, now, can you look, look at what you see here in the text that they never repented? They kept blaming God. They didn't have enough sense to say, God, have mercy on us. They didn't have enough sense to say, Lord, we repent. We, Lord, we just surrender. But when the devil has blinded your, your, your mind and blinded your eyes, it's hard for you to repent. That's, that's like people that are stuck in a certain lifestyle. It's difficult. I know we say they should just change. But they've been blinded to believe that they ought to follow what they feel. Come on. Because that's what the world teaches. Mm -hmm. Follow what you feel. Trust your heart. But that's not biblical. Mm -hmm. The Bible says the heart is deceitful. The mm -hmm. Bible says the heart will trick you and desperately wicked. Amen? Amen. Amen. So every island fled away, verse 20, and the mountains were not found. Can you imagine that? It says the islands fled away. Mm -hmm. 
the mountains were not found. I don't know if y'all get that. That's, I mean, that's going to be amazing. You ain't going to be able to find the mountains nor the island, let alone your cousin Pookie and them. You ain't going to be able to find the mountains. Y'all hear what I'm saying? It says, and there fell upon the men a great hail of heaven every stone. So this is a great, a great earthquake. Where are we on time? Hallelujah. Oh, we at 745. We got to quit. Uh, what, what, I, what I want to remind you of, now this is the vows of judgment, right? Did we get this? We're talking about the vow. This is going to be poured out upon the people in the last days. Mm -hmm. This is this tribulation period. And like I said last week, this is not to scare you. This is just to make you aware of the things that John seen in the last days mm -hmm. to let us know that we, we, have the, we have the greatest God. We got the greatest foundation. We got, we got the greatest Savior. But in the end, God will prevail. But there's going to be some evil that come up against us. So as Christians, you got to, that's why I say, we, and, and I'm glad y'all here tonight, but we got to be sold out for Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We got to tell somebody about Jesus. We got to tell somebody because these things will happen to the people that are still here. Hallelujah. And it may be your fault that your mama, your sister, your brother, your uncle, your cousin don't make it in because you were afraid to open your mouth. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? So it's up to you to tell them about Jesus because you have the gift of eternal life in your mouth if you open it. Amen. When you go to the Dollar Tree or Food Line, open up your mouth the next time. Amen. And tell somebody. And if they don't accept it, that's on them. But you have done your job. Amen. You have done it. You have tried to save your family. You have tried to save them that you witnessed to. Amen. But there is going to be a great tribulation. But in the end, God will prevail. Amen. Amen. And when we teach people, when we talk to people, it is about Letting them know that first they got to repent. You can't make it in if you don't change. I don't care how bad you love what you're doing and you think it's right. If it ain't lining up with scripture, then you got to change. Amen? Amen. And those are hard sayings because it's hard for people to, to deal with you saying that they need to change. But you got to be able to stand on the truth. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father, we thank you tonight. We honor you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for all that you have taught us. God, I pray that you bless us in this next portion of our service. God, as we go through questions and answers, and I pray, God, that you will help us to learn even more. God, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for blessing us and, and helping us, God. And I ask, God, that we will continue to remember how good you are, even in what we study, even when we study the tribulation and we study the millennium and we, we study, God, the second coming of Christ. God, I pray, God, that it would charge us up to let us know that we can go out and win a soul, God, because we don't want people to have to suffer like that if we have anything to do with it. So, God, I pray that you would anoint us afresh. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Come on, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to go ahead and split up into our, our groups real quickly. Amen. So... We will go here. Those of you who are online, if you come out to the service, we have small groups on Wednesday night. Amen. You have to get here for this portion. But we're going to split up in groups. Amen. Amen. As we split up with groups, those of you who want to give online, you can give at Dollar Sign Region Temple and be a blessing to the ministry. Amen. All right. We're getting ready. Uh, Y'all go ahead and split up this way. All right, y'all find your group.